Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am going live from my car. I have not done this in months now, probably in like six months, but I am not able to go live this evening. So I figured if I don't do this now, I'm not going to be able to do it. And um, I haven't been on it here uh, in a little while. So I am going live in the morning and on uh, from my car. And thank you, Periscope, for being so faithful. I know some of you guys are jumping on while you're at work. Um, and so it's so appreciated. Facebook is a little bit slower, but they're getting on. Um, so I'm going to be talking um, today um, about a topic that we have been discussing at our church. Thank you for the compliment. I absolutely love teaching. It's one of those things that uh, makes me feel alive. Someone was saying I was a gifted teacher, but it's awesome to have you guys all on. Someone said, is it too late to sign up for the Sears and Prophets class? That class just opened. Um, actually, I wasn't even supposed to say that yet, but it is open. Um, those that were previous students, we opened it up to them yesterday, and we're going to open it up to uh, we open it up to our email list. So if you're on our mailing list, you got that link to register for our fivefold school, School of the Prophets, as well as Spiritual Development School, and then we're going to open it up to the rest of the world. Uh, later this afternoon. So we take 100 students. Um, this year we're going to take 150 students for the first week and then 100 students for the second week. So the registry is going to go fast, but we have payment plans um, and we will be sharing with everybody else um, that um, link to register for that school, but it has been open to those that are on our mailing list and those that are part. Um, in terms of the certification course, and I'm just answering questions quickly as people jump on. The certification course, there's still room there. We're about 50% capacity. So you have a little bit of time. Um, April 15th, we're gonna, um, it, the price is gonna go up. So it's early registration right now for those that wanna be certified as life coaches or mentors and um, just really grow in that area. Um, someone said only 150 students can sign up for the School of the Prophets. Yes. Yeah, because we pray for you guys. We lay hands. Um, we minister to you throughout the whole week. And so, I mean, eventually it's going to have to keep growing. We are growing. Last year we had about 115 students, so we pushed it to 150 students. Um, someone asked, is the certification class online? Yes. So every class that I do is available online, but the one that is in August, the School of the Prophets um, and the Development Schools, we ask that you come live because of the ministry um, intensi uh, intensity that's there. But my certification programs are all webinars. Um, it's all online for six weeks. You get the recordings um, after each class, but there is homework uh, that you do have to turn in. Um, there is uh, some uh, videos that you have to do so we can see how you are as a coach, um, as emerging mentor, so we can coach you through that. So yes. Um, if I already took the life coach class, can you listen in again as a refresher? Yes. So for the life coaching certification, if you've taken it once, um, you can contact us and we'll give you the login. You're pretty much a lifetime member and you can listen every time we do that certification. If that's true of any certification. So for example, if you took our deliverance and inner healing certification, then you can listen to that all the, as, as much as you want. However, if you took the inner healing and deliver certification and you want to sit in in the life coaching one, you can't do that. You have to have taken the course first in order to be a lifetime member. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in uh, into the content that I have for you guys today. Uh, like I said, I'm jumping on in the morning from my car because I just I'm not going to have time um, this afternoon. Someone said, saw you at Millions last year, just started watching you on YouTube. Awesome. And I'll be at Millions again this year. Um, so I look forward. I always love being with entrepreneurs and um, business people. So that's in July, I believe. Um, yes, I'll be in Dallas next week. I speak at one. Several of you guys have been emailing and they do have um, days passes. They do have session passes. So if you can't stay for the whole conference or you'd love just to come hear me speak, it's Friday afternoon at one. So um, how do we get certified? I'm not sure for what you're asking, but you take the courses uh, and you go to askdrfaith.com and um, the certifications uh, come through there um, and we'll go from there. 
All right, let me go into this. So our, our church, our church community is on a series called Uncomfortable. And we are talking about the, the process of becoming an authentic community and what it means to live in family, what it means to live in relationship with other people and how that whole journey can be uncomfortable. It's a journey of really knowing who you are. It's a journey of love. It's a journey of patience. And so I um, taught this past Sunday on the messiness of community and the messiness of family. And through it, I talked about what it means to be authentic. And so I'm gonna give you guys some of those notes. You can watch the whole sermon on my YouTube. We'll be uploading it there as well as Legacy Center's YouTube or their Facebook page. But I'm gonna be giving you guys some specific things on how you grow in authenticity as an individual. All right, I'll answer this last question and then I'll take questions at the end. Um, is this for the Deliverance and Inner Healing Certification? I'm not sure, but we teach uh, identity and purpose in that course, and part of that is authenticity. So I'm not sure exactly what um, you're asking is this for, but um, I'm just sharing on authenticity. Uh, if you're a coach, if you're a mentor, if you're a pastor, this is something you have to master individually, and then you have to teach your people how to walk through it. So uh, in that matter, yes, it is. It's something that every, every leader needs to um, master for their own personal growth, but not only coaching, but if you're married, like you can't be married and not be vulnerable. You cannot be married and not be honest. You cannot even be a friend and not master some of the things that I'm going to give you guys today. All right. So when we look at the uh, term uh, uh, authenticity, what that is, is the absolute core of who you really are, right? And this is outside of your function. This is outside of your title. This is outside of your role. When we're talking about authenticity, we're talking about who you are in terms of your skills, your wisdom, your wit, your humor, your quirkiness, the real hardcore of who you are. And there's a whole now journey of authenticity because I think that people are just tired of dealing with people who are not authentic, who are fake, uh, who are one way in one place and a different way in another place. We see it in church all the time. That's why we are doing this series at our church. Because in order for you to be transformed, in order for you to have meaningful relationships, you need to be authentic. And so one of the first things to becoming authentic is actually being what we call introspective. Introspective. This is the ability to look into yourself and say, you know what? I probably should not have said that. You know what? I'm probably too bossy. You know what? I'm probably too outspoken. You know what? I probably need to mature in this area. But a lot of people are not able to be introspective because a lot of people are afraid of who they are. And the reason they're afraid of who they are is because they view themselves through a lens of trauma, of rejection, of a abuse. And so if you have gone through certain things that made you feel like you had to pretend or you had to make, uh, behave a certain way in order for you to applaud you, in order for you to people to receive you, in order for people to celebrate you, then most people would rather be the fake version of themselves and be applauded by people than really do the hard work of getting to the core of who they really are. And so what robs us of authenticity is the inability to take time out to deal with who we really are. And one of the things that you have to understand is who you are is shaped by your family of origin. It's shaped by your biology. It's shaped by your environment. It's shaped by your view of God, your theology of God, your, th your theology of family, all that stuff. But we don't want to do the hard work. We do not want to go in there and say, why do I think the way that I think? Why do I dress the way that I dress? Why do I have so many friends, but not really any friends? Or why do I say I'm an introvert and not connect to people? Why do I struggle with anxiety so much? Like you've got to be willing to go there in order to become your authentic self. And you cannot be afraid of the hard answers. And this is the other thing. People are not willing to take blame for their own behavior. Most people that are not authentic do what we call deflection. Deflection is always finding the fault in everybody else and everything else except themselves. Now, this is the thing. If you get in conflicts all the time or you get in conflicts on a regular basis and in those discussions of those conflicts, you are the main issue, then the issue might be you. 
but you will find that people that are not authentic and people that are not mature will tend to blame <laughs> someone said like R. Kelly did. Oh yeah. And this is all connected to a thwarted sense of identity. If you don't mature properly, if you don't grow emotionally, you use deflection as a tool. So besides being introspective, which is sitting down and doing the work of, you know, I was sharing with the church, I can be critical. I can be bossy. I am very uh, intense concerning certain things. I know that and I'm okay with that. But I also know that sometimes that can be not okay. And so my job is to begin to figure out how do I deal with my weaknesses, but not be afraid of them. A lot of people are afraid of exposing the areas where they're weak because they feel like it demeans who they are and their value. And then the other people make excuses for their weaknesses. Oh, that's just the way that I am. So what? I don't have to change how I am. Well, you do, especially if you ha are having relational issues, if you have problems in leadership, if you have problems with friendships, you do have to change the way you are, or you're going to continue to complain that you don't have authentic relationships. People are just so fake. I don't have a lot of fake people around me because I can sniff them out a mile away. And beyond that, I am as authentic as I can be. So this is the thing. You will realize that fake people hang out with fake people because they love pretending and they're okay with other people pretending. But I like authenticity. I like people that can, you know, just be who they are, whether they're working on themselves and they don't have it all together. I'd rather that than somebody who acts one way and then in, in front of me and then a totally different way. So we have to be introspective we have to be willing to not uh, deflect. Deflecting is owning up to our stuff. Authenticity is the ability to own up to your mess. I, have, I, I don't have a hard time apologizing at all. I know people who have a really difficult time. Now, there are certain things that people may require you to apologize for that you know darn well you didn't do and that they are wrong about. So you know what you apologize about? You apologize about how they're feeling. I'm sorry that you feel that way, right? But I'm not going to own up to you, your inability to manage your emotions. So for example, right? If somebody comes up to me and they say, Dr. Faith, you were just so hard on me. What you said was really hard. What I do is I check myself and I say, was my motive pure? Was I trying to exhort them, edify them and comfort them? Um, do I have a relationship with this person? If the answer to all those things are yes, and I have come to you at uh, other times and it hasn't been so direct or blunt because this is the thing. Some people who are very direct and blunt, you're always direct and blunt. You don't know how to discern what relationships to be direct and blunt to. You cannot treat everybody the same way, right? But if I say, okay, we're in relationship, you know my heart, you know how we've talked before, and you know I would never say anything to destroy you. So I'm sorry that you feel hurt right now. However, this is what I meant. And so a lot of times, one, we need to learn how to not only apologize, but people have a hard time learning how to apologize because once again, it goes to their identity and their sense of person. They feel like if I apologize, then it speaks to the fact that I, something's wrong with me or that I made a mistake. And some of us are perfectionists and we struggle with having to do everything right. That robs you of, that robs you of authenticity. Because if you're always working to be perfect, always working to be right, you can never be yourself. And there is nobody that can always be correct, always be right. And so when you are aware of that, that, hey, sometimes I make mistakes and then being honest about it, then it's easy to apologize, right? And then some of us are unable to apologize because we are... Um, like I said, it's an issue of pride. It takes away from who we feel like we ought to be and it minimizes who we think we should be. But we have to deal with that mess. We have to work it out. Introspection, dealing with deflection, dealing with the inability to say sorry. And then you want to be uh, honest with yourself. This is one that I really hit home on Sunday. Honesty concerning your issues, concerning the areas that you're working on, concerning the areas that make you uncomfortable. And when you're honest with yourself, like, oh, you know, I really have a hard time with women or, oh, I'm, I'm insecure around other men. That's a starting point. But if you can't be honest with those areas, then you cannot start. 
And so a lot of people are not able to grow in deep relationship because they're not willing to go there. Like I, let's see, I'm trying to think of a, a personal issue, an area maybe that I needed to, that I've grown into or matured into. Um, uh, let's see, maybe going, when I got to grad school, this is the thing. When you graduate the top of your class in undergrad or high school, you're like the, the cream of the crop. But when you go to college or you go to grad school, like everybody graduated the top of their class, right? And so you can get in an environment like that and begin to feel insecure or begin to feel um, less than. And then you begin to say stuff like, well, everybody's always overlooking me or people don't notice me or people are saying stuff about me. But the, pro the truth is you are feeling insecure sure about your placement in that group so therefore you are projecting your feelings on them i'm giving y'all a whole free 150 dollars session today because this is the stuff we work on in coaching we work on in counseling um and so i had to be honest like oh everybody's smart here but the fact that everybody's smart here doesn't mean that i'm not smart right everybody's pretty here but the fact that everybody's pretty here doesn't mean i'm not pretty everybody's prophetic here but the fact that everybody's prophetic doesn't take away from that but the moment you feel like you're less than because people are better than you or they have more than you or they're stronger than you then what that means is that you are not authentic to who you are that means that you're not aware of your strengths you're not able to celebrate them. You focus more on your weaknesses. And a lot of people do that. And so when you're struggling with authenticity, one of the things is that all you can see is what you do wrong and not necessarily anything that you do right. And that's why authentic community is really important because community is not just there to correct you, but community should also celebrate you, right? Community should tell you when you're doing things right, when you're, um, you're heading the right way, but you should also be able to take the correction uh, when they're telling you so honesty honesty about yourself honesty about your relationships if you are not married yet i need you to do a self check because i have so many single women who are like i don't know why i'm not married and even men but you are extremely critical you're extremely anxious you're always nervous you're never on time for stuff. You're not taking care of yourself. Like people can perceive those things. And this doesn't mean that when you get married, that stuff gets fixed. It just gets even messier in your marriage because usually our dysfunction is who, what attracts, um, it attracts dysfunction. And so if you have a lot of areas that you have not dealt with, where you've not been authentic, because I could sit with my husband and if he corrects me, I can say, you know what? You're right. Because you know what? I've done the work. I've done the work to say, oh, this is an area that I'm not very strong in, or I interrupt people. So when he corrects me, you're right. You know, we're working on stuff, right? But if you haven't done your own work, if you get in a relationship or you have leaders that are trying to develop you, you're not able to see it and you're not able to move forward. Another word that's connected to authentic uh, honesty um, is, I'm sorry, authenticity is vulnerability vulnerability which is the ability to know um just what to share um to certain people vulnerability is not even just what to share but it's being aware of who you are and being okay with it a lot of people are not vulnerable they will give you what they think you want and what they think you need from them because they're all they're trying to give you their best self but when a person is authentic, they can give you uh, the whole gamut of who they are, and then you can decide whether you want a piece of that or not, right? Now, what I mean by that is if you go into a place and you feel like you cannot be vulnerable because people are going to reject you or people are not going to want you, then you're not necessarily being um, authentic. But when you're vulnerable, you can go into a place and give them your strengths and not have to dumb yourself down, but also can let them know, hey, I'm struggling in this area, or I don't know how to do this, but I'm working in this area, and not feel like that's going to um, alienate you or people are going to overlook you. But when you're not vulnerable, you tend to just show people what you think you want or what you think they need. One of the things that I said on Sunday during the sermon is that we have to give up the need um, to be approved by people. We need to give up that right. When you're authentic, it doesn't really matter. Like their approval is welcomed, but it's not the thing that defines you. We're defined by who God says we are and what we carry and who we're becoming. All right. And so when we are vulnerable, 
we are able to open up. Let me read you this quote that I shared on Sunday from Brenna Brown. And she has an amazing book on all this stuff um, called Rising, uh, Rising Strong or something like that. But vulnerability is about showing up and being seen. It is tough to do that when you're terrified about what people might see. But if you've already done the work and um, you're okay, right? You see your weaknesses and your strengths, then you're not afraid of what people are going to see. But a lot of people, we associate vulnerability with pain, with hurt, with betrayal or fear, right? We think if we're going to be vulnerable, then we're going to be hurt or we're going to be betrayed or we're going to be afraid. Uh, I mean, afraid we're going to be, um, we'll have to walk in fear. And for some of us, we have, um, like a logical reason to feel that way. Maybe you opened yourself up. Maybe you gave your heart to someone. You were vulnerable and then these things happened. But for some of us, we hear stories and then we get into a community. We get around people and we're not willing to be honest or transparent because of what we have heard. The truth is vulnerability, authenticity is hard work, but it's always worth it. And if you're going to have meaningful relationships, if you're going to have deep friendships, you need it. And if you are in ministry, if you are in business, there is a, a whole study. I may teach on this at Millions. We'll see. Um, of, of psychology that's connected to success in business and in ministry that's connected to vulnerability and transparency, transparency of your projects, transparency um, of your character. You will find that uh, ministers, business people that are more authentic, have more followers, that are more transparent, have more engagement. And when we talk about transparent, we're not necessarily I'm sorry, vulnerable. They have more engagement. Transparency is the ability to discern who you tell what, right? So you could be authentic and you can be vulnerable and you can be transparent. But there are some people who are like, oh, I'm authentic, but you're not really transparent. And transparency is the ability to truly say who you really are when requested upon. Some of us lie. You know, I was sharing with our church. We walk past you say, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Well, you're not being transparent because the truth is you're not. And we see by your Facebook posts, right? You're not fine, right? Transparency doesn't mean telling all your business. Transparency is uh, identifying the people you can trust to share. But it's also the ability to be honest with where you're at, who you're at, what, um, who you're becoming, and what's going on in your life. But a lot of us are not very transparent. Oh, I'm authentic. I'm me. I'm me. I do me. Whatever, whatever. But when we sit you down and say, hey, really, how are you? How are you? You, Oh, I, I'm fine. Wow, your level of transparency is a little jaded. So in order to be authentic, you've got to be honest. You've got to be vulnerable. And you also got to be transparent. And this is a journey. When I say journey on a daily basis, you ask yourself, how do I grow in maturity in this area? How am I being honest with the people that are closest to me? Am I being authentically me? Or do I feel like I have to be six different people depending on who I'm talking to? And the reason you've heard it said before, I don't know who said it, but you know, God can't bless who you pretend to be, right? It might've been Stephen Furtick. He can't bless that. And that's why identity is so important. Understanding who you are and understanding that God loves you, understanding that he has set you apart is so, 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 so key. So I want to encourage you guys on that journey. If you haven't picked up my book, Marked, start there, start 